everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this video, I'm going to continue our discussion about my own formula for combination and permutation. In the last video, I've discussed about the combination of two and the permutation of two. And in this video, we're going to continue to discuss about the combination of three and permutation of three. Alright, so before we go any further, don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you won't miss any of these videos that are just like this and don't forget to like this video and share this to your friends so let's start by asking ourselves what is actually combination and permutation well combination is denoted mathematically as n c r small n large c small r but i like to write it just capital n c and r because it's a little bit easier to read and write so i'm going to read this a little bit So basically, for combination, it says C in the middle. For permutation, it says P. So for combination, that's basically when you're given N amount of numbers, let's say this time 5, let's say the 5 objects of alphabets, A, B, C, D, and E. And then we're asked to group them. And so on. And then we're asked to group them with members. Of our amount. So what do I mean by this? So within these five alphabets, we can group them each with three members. Let's say A, C, and E, or B, C, D, or A, D, E, and so on. And then combination is asking us how many of these groups are possible. All right, so that's the definition of combination. But what is the definition of permutation? So it's exactly the same thing. We're given n amount of objects for us to group them, each with r amount of members. But the difference of permutation with combination is that permutation considers all of the possible arrangements. For example, let's take the group ACE. There are different arrangements possible within these three alphabets. For example, ACE, there is ECA. There is EAC and so on. For combination, each and one of, of every one of these are the same because they denote the same members, ACE, 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 so on. But for permutation, these are different. They consider all the possible arrangements. So with that out of the way, let's just discuss about the simple equation for combination and permutation that you might be familiar with. Let's say NCR this is going to be n factorial over r factorial times by n minus r factorial. And then for permutation, it's that n pr is equal to n factorial over n minus r factorial. The difference is that n minus r factorial is in here, while r factorial does not present in here. So. If you're wondering what this exclamation mark means, is that if you have a factorial, a has to be an integer, this is just the product of all the positive integers smaller than or equal to it. So what do I mean by this? Let's say 5 factorial. What are all the positive integers that are equal to 5 and smaller than 5? Well, that is 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. And product means that we multiply them together which is, we multiply them together. And this value is going to be a factorial. So let's say 30 factorial is equal to 30 times 29 all the way to 1. And there are actually some formulas with advanced functions and calculus to figure out decimal factorials, but we'll not be discussing about that right now. So with that intro out of the way, let's discuss about the exciting thing, the new formula for combination and permutation of three. So firstly, let's discuss about the combination first, because it's quite simple to work out. So let's take a simple example of a combination. Let's say 10C3. So we can visualize this. This is the M and this is the R. So we can take, let's say, 10 alphabets from A all the way until J. And then 
we can group these objects by joining them together. For example, the group A, D, E, we can join them from A to D to E, like that. And then a group H, I, J would be joining them up like that. Pretty simple. So then, there are a lot of different patterns and combinations within this. So we have to tackle it step by step systematically to figure out patterns between them and then express it numerically. So let's say that the first time, the first value we're searching for, which is all the possible groups, but the first and second members are together. The first and second members are together. So what do I mean by this? For example, let's take a group, A, B, E. What is the first and second number? Well, it has to be A and B, because those are the left ones, the first and second ones. And these are together. There's no other alphabets between them. So these are the types of groups that we're going to account for. And a group such as G, I, J won't count, because the first and second group are G and I, which are one value apart. There is one value between them. So now, let's count for all the possible values in here. Well, let's start with the first two values being A and B. This one works out because A and B are together. They're next to each other. And then, what is the possible third value? Well, A, B, C is possible. A, B, D is possible. A, B, E is possible, and so on but writing it with this notation is a little bit messy. Let's use a little bit nicer notation to write this. So, A and B are going to be the fixed first and second point, the first and second number, and then A, B, C, that's a possible group. A, B, D, possible group. E, F, G, H, I, G. So these circles just make it easier for us to write down. For example, A, B, E circle means we join A, B with E. A, B, H circle means we join AB with H. It just makes the notation a little bit easier to work with. So, with an explanation out of the way, let's just count it. What are the first and second member? Well, we can count it like this. ABC, that's one. ABD, that's two, so on. But we can just count the circles. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's eight. And then we can express this as N minus Two, in which n is equal to 10. And how do we get n is equal to 10? Well, we've shown it in here. n is going to be 10. So we just learned it more generally, using variables. Alright, so this is going to be the first value. What about the second one? We start with a and b. What if we start with b and c? So now, let's take the alphabets again. a, b, and before. We've accounted for when A and B are the first and second numbers. What if, this time, it's B and C? So, what are the possible groups? B, C, D. That's possible. B, C, E. That's possible. B, C, F, G, H, I, and J. All of these are possible combinations. And if you're asking, what about B, C, A? Well, it's because this combination had already been accounted for in here. See? A, B, C. So we're not gonna count it again. So now, let's just count how many members, or groups rather, in here. Well, you can just count the possible circles. There are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. There are 7 of them. So, 7, n minus 3. And again, just to remind, n is equal to 10. That makes sense. 10 minus 3 is indeed equal to 7. And then, we can already see a pattern. n minus 2, n minus 3. Are the next ones n minus 4, n minus 5, and so on? Well, we can count the combinations, but we can just think about it systematically. So, all of these groups are the exact same ones as these. However, these ones start at A, and these ones start at B. So, these groups are just shifted to the right by one alphabet. So then, what about the groups at J? If it's shifted to the right, then what is its value? Well, then it's going to be no value. Because if it's at J, 
we shift it to the right, that's going to have no value because that's the very end of our alphabet sequence. So that means that all of these numbers are decreasing by one because the values at the very end are going to be erased. So then the next values are indeed going to be m minus 4, m minus 5, and so on. So let's say we want to count all of these together. So then we just take the first value, m minus 2, we plus it by m minus 3, and we plus it by m minus 4, and then so on, until we reach 0, which is just basically n minus n. And we can express it as 1 plus by 2 plus by 3 plus by 4 all the way to plus by n minus 2. So then, by arithmetic series, we know that this value is going to be n minus 2 times by n minus 1 divided by 2. Alright, so keep that value in mind. n minus 2 times by n minus 1 divided by 2. So, in these two examples, we've counted if the first and second members are together. What if we count the last and second last are together? That's very interesting, and we're going to get a very interesting result. So if you write the alphabet again, so then in here, because the first and second members are together, we write it from the left to the right. But in here, because the last and second last of the members are together, we're going to write it from the right to the left. So, J and I. That's a possible two groups, because the last member and the second last member are together. So then, the last and second last members are J and I. So, what is the other member of the group? Well, J, I, H. That's a possible value. J, I, J. J, I, G, sorry. That's a possible value. J, I, F. And same thing with E, D, C, B, and A. So, this is going to be the value for when which the last and second last are together. And how many of them are there? Well, there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. There is 8 of them, which can be expressed as n minus 2. And we can actually continue to count with the last values being i and h, and then h and g, so on and so forth, and look at the pattern. However, there's a simple simplification to all this. This group, this diagram, is the same thing as this one, but flipped around. In this case, the members there together are the left, a and b. Well, in this one, it's at the right, j and i. So we can conclude, and if, an, if you want to prove it yourself, just count again, that this value, the total, is going to be the same thing as this. n minus 2 times by n minus 1 divided by 2. So what if we want to sum it together? We total it. Well, it's going to be this value plus by this value. But because this and this is the same, it's the same thing as multiplying it by 2. So then the 2's will cancel out. And we're going to get n minus 2 times by n minus 1. A very neat expression. However, let's think about one more case. Let's look at a possible group. Let's say if we have the alphabets A, B, and C, and then we join them up. This value, with one perspective, we can say that the first and second members are together, which is going to be the example that we've looked at in here before, before we read it. And then the second value that we can look at it is that the last and second last members are together. This value. So these types of groups have been accounted for twice. So then what we need to do is we have this expression and we have to subtract it by the excessive amount of groups there are. And how many of it? Well, you can trace it out using this diagram and count how many of them are there, but we can just use this simple equation. How many alphabets do we have? 10. And then, how many alphabets are there within this case? A, B, C. There are three. 
So we take 10, minus it by 3, we plus it by 1. We get that 7 plus 1, that is 8. And if you're wondering, how does this equation come up? Well, it's actually very straightforward and intuitive to find out and derive it, but for the purpose of this video, I'm going to skip through that. You can check it out yourself if you want to. So we take 8, which is equal to n minus 2. So then we can have this expression. We subtract it by n minus 2. So this is the same thing as plusing by the negative of this value. So then we can use a simple algebraic expression. n minus 2 with n minus 2, they join up. So then n minus 2 itself. And then n minus 1 with negative 1, they join up. That gives us n minus 2. And then this will be m minus 2 squared, an even neater expression. So we're going to keep in mind this value because it's a value that we've spent 10 minutes searching for. n minus 2 squared. So in the previous example, we've accounted for when the first and second value are together and when the last and second last are together. So what if we counted for the third one, the first and second value are one apart. So what do I mean by this? So if we take, let's say, a group, a simple group. So let's say a group A, C, D. In this case, the first and second values are A and C. They are one apart because there is one value between them. And then another possible value could be A, D, E. This does not come into this possible values because the first and second values, A and D, are two apart. Because there are two values between them. So now that we know the difference between the groups we're counting for and not counting for, Let's jump right in into the calculation. So let's draw the diagram of our values, which are just the alphabets. All right, so in here, the first and second value are one apart. So what is the possible first and second values? Well, A and C, that's a possible one because they are one apart. There is one value between them, B. And then what are the possible other groups? Well, A, C, D, that's a possible one, A, C, E, that's a possible one, F, G, H, I, J. And how many of these are there? Well, we can count it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. There are 7, which is can be expressed as n minus 3. And then, let's count for when which, let's say, B and D. That's also a possible first and second value. So you write up the alphabets first. And then we can write B and D as the first value, because these are one alphabet apart. And then what are the possible groups? B, D, E, that's one. B, D, F, B, D, G, H, I, J. And if you're wondering, we don't count B, D, A, because if we do that, then the first and second value will be next to each other, rather than being one apart. So how many of these are there? Well, we can count the circles. One, two, three four, five, six. So there are six of them, which is equal to n minus four. And we found the exact same pattern. They are decreasing by one. And it also makes sense of the same reason. This is basically this diagram, but shifted towards the right. That means that the value on the j is going to be shifted to the right, but there's no other values aside from j. So it will be no value. It will be taken out. So then they will decrease it by 1, which makes sense in here, in n minus 3 and n minus 4. So then the total we can calculate is going to be n minus by 3 plus by n minus by 4 plus by n minus 5 all the way until we reach 0, which can be expressed as n minus n. And another way to express this is 1 plus 2 plus 3 all the way to n minus by 3, like this. And by arithmetic series, we can know that this is going to be equal to n minus by 3 
times by n minus by 2, all of that divided by 2. So that is going to be another value we have to remember. We put it in here, n minus 3 times by n minus 2 divided by 2. So that is going to be if we choose first and second R1 apart. What if, as the fourth value, we count that the last and second last are one apart? So we can just draw our diagram with the alphabets A, B, R. So in here, we write it from the left to the right. But in here, because we start off with the last value, last and second last, we write it as the last and second last too. G, M, well not G, M, I. The possible value is G and H, because they are one apart. G, J and H. And what are the possible other members of the group? Well, J, H, G is possible. J, H, F, J, H, E, D, C, B, A. And there are seven of these, which is going to be expressed as a minus three. And the same pattern arises. This diagram is the exact same with this one, but it's flipped. The left values, A and C, is flipped into J and H. So the total of this is going to be the same as this one, which is going to be N minus 3 times by N minus 2 divide by 2. So then if we sum them together, this plus by this, we get that it's going to be this value multiplied by 2. And then the 2 scales out, we get that it's going to be n minus 3 times by n minus 2. And there we go, we've got a very important value. So let's keep that value in mind again. n minus 3 times by n minus 2. Same as the previous one, there are also special cases. For example, let's take the group... Well, let's, let's write the alphabets first. Let's take a group A, C, E. In one perspective, we can say that the first and second value are one apart, joining in this value. But in another perspective, we can say that the last and second last are one apart. So that means that these types of groups, these types of combinations of groups, are going to be accounted for twice. So we have to minus this value by the excessive amount. So how many of these are there? Well, we can use our simple equation. We take the number of alphabets, that's 10. We minus it by the amount of alphabets within it. Not only that we have to count 1, 2, 3, but we also have to count the values within it. D and B are also counted for. There are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 of these. So 10 minus by 5 plus by 1. And that gives us it's going to be 6. It's n minus by 4. There is one more important case to think about. Let's say a value for this. A, B, D, and then let's say A, C, D. So in here, in this value, in one perspective, we can say that the last and second last are one apart, joining in this group, these groups. But in another perspective, we can say that the first and second values are next to each other. The example we counted for before. So that means that this group had already been accounted for. So how many of these are there? Well, the alphabets, 10, minus by the amount of alphabets within this, D, C, B, A, 4, plus by 1. That gives us 10 minus 4 is 6, plus 1 is 7, which is equal to n minus 3. And then, this value, too, in one perspective, we can say that the first and second value are one apart, joining in these groups. But in another perspective, we can say that the last and second last are together, joining in the previous example we've accounted for before. So we have to minus this value by this amount, because this has already been accounted for. How many of these are there? Well, the exact same formula. 10 minus by 1, 2, 3, 4, plus 1, is equal to 7, which is n minus 3. So we have n minus 3 in here and n minus 3 in here. 
let's sum them together. M minus 3 plus by M minus 3. Well, we can see that it's going to be equal to M minus 3 times by 2. So then, this value, M minus 4, and this value, M minus 3 times 2, we have to subtract them from this. So then, we have this value, M minus by 3 times by M minus by 2, and then we're going to subtract it by the first value, N minus 4, and minus by N minus 4 is the same thing as plus by N minus 4 times by negative 1. And then, don't forget to minus by N minus by 3 times by 2, which minus by this value is the same thing as plus it by a negative value of it. So then, what do we get? Well, we can combine N minus 3 with N minus 3, so we get N minus 3, and then we have to combine N minus 2 with negative 2. We get N minus 4. N minus 4. And then, don't forget to add the excessive amount, N minus 4, times by negative 1. And then we can do the same thing. We combine N minus 4 with N minus 4. That gives us this value. And then we combine N minus 3 with negative 1. That gives us N minus 3 minus 1. That is N minus 4. Which is equal to N minus 4 squared. And we've got our second value. So our first value is N minus 2 squared. And our second value is N minus 4 squared. And we can already see a pattern here. These values are just the amount minus by 2 and then square them. And we can count for the combinations of other groups. And these are going to be this pattern over here. And if you want to think about it, it's actually quite intuitive that these values are going to decrease and then we're going to square it. Because we're going to have these important rules such that they're one apart, they're two apart, which is going to make them decrease by the amount of negative 2 and then we're going to square it because of all of the possible arrangements of these values and then all of them combine into a perfect amount such that it will be equal to its squared. So that means that the formula for mc3 is going to be n minus 2 squared plus by n minus 4 squared plus by, well, negative 2, negative 4, negative 6 n minus 6 squared, so on and so forth. And there are two ways that this sequence can end, which is if n is even, that means that the ending sequence is going to be 0 squared, but if n is odd, the end sequence must be plus by 1 squared, which is just 1. So then this is going to be our value for combination of 3. It's actually quite long and winding, but eventually we got this value. And now, with this information in mind, we can already calculate for the permutation quite easily. So firstly, to make the equation we found before into a permutation, let's think about the difference of combination and permutation. So for combination, I've told this in the start of the video, combination does not care if the group has different arrangements. For example, the group A, B. This group A, B, is the same with the group BA, even though they are different arrangements. For combination, these two are different. Uh, these two are the same, sorry. But for permutation, these values are different. Permutation considers all the possible arrangements. So, because we're dealing with combination and permutation of three, how many possible arrangements are there in a group of three? Well, we can count three factorial, which is equal to three times two times one, is equal to 6. Or we can take a simple group, ABC, and all the possible arrangements are ABC, ACB, uh, CAB, BAC, what else? BCA, and CBA. And there are no other values other than this. And there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So to convert the equation of combination into permutation, we just need to multiply it by 6. So then mp3 is going to be 6 multiplied by the equation for combination, which is n minus 2 squared plus n minus 4 squared, all the way. And this is going to be 
the formula for permutation of tree. And let me just rewrite the formula for permutation of tree also. It's going to be just this value, n minus 2 squared plus by n minus 4 squared all the way. And there we go. We have found the formula for combination and permutation of tree. So, before this video ends, I just want to say that these equations are very long, and I don't expect any one of you to use these for counting, combination, and permutation. Just stick to the equation that you're given from school or from your courses, because they're way easier. But the purpose of this video is just to show how we can have different formulas for one question using different methods of calculating it. And in this case, it's actually quite fascinating that the combination and permutation of three is going to be perfect squares that are consecutive. This is n minus two, this is n minus four. Perfect squares that are consecutive, and this one is going to be perfect squares that are consecutive times by six. This is actually very fascinating, and it drove me to make this video. So if you like this video, don't forget to hit the subscribe button because you'll be notified whenever other videos like this show up. And don't forget to like the video as I've put a lot of effort into these videos. Don't forget to share everything to your friends, and thank you for watching.